Happy Friday, Newsies! It is I, Becca Lori Hector, here with your next installment of Neurodiversity Newsstand. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe. If you're returning, welcome back. I am excited today. I am like pumped. Um, so I had some stuff going on this week. Um, if you follow me anywhere else, you know that um, I'm doing a webinar tomorrow, actually. Um, I'm actually doing my, I took my keynote speech that I give talking about um, self-defined living and how to create a life you don't need a vacation from. And I am putting it online, you guys. I am um, <clears throat> gonna be doing that tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m. And then um, it will be recorded. And so a whole bunch of people I, I know have registered and I hope they'll come. My shirt is crooked and for some reason that's bothering me right now. Um, and um, so those people will be watching it live. And for those that are going to be watching it live, I am following the hour presentation with a half hour Q&A, which is really like an AMA. Um, don't need questions to be about the um, presentation, but we'll take all questions uh, other than about my sex life. Um, and so that's going on tomorrow live. So I'm amped about that because right after I'm done with this, I do like the last minute tweaks on my slides and stuff. So it's one of my weird little habits that I have. Um, I noticed that when I was working on a presentation and I was getting ready um, to be traveling to go and give one or whatever, um, that uh, <laughs> um, I get really excited and I really enjoy making a PowerPoint. I feel like I need to say that quietly, though I know there are some of you out there that also enjoy making PowerPoints. Um, and so after I'm done making the PowerPoint, I like want the world to see it instantly. So what I've done is try to capitalize on that excitement energy that I get. And I leave uh, tweaking my PowerPoints until the last like 24 hours before I'm going to be presenting because then I get so excited. I just want to give it already. Um, and it just all comes out better. Like all my passion is there. All my excitement is there. All my energy. Um, and when I try and force myself to work on them too far away from when I'm going to be giving them, I like can't motivate it's so strange but i know it about myself so now i plan around it um so when i'm done here i'm gonna be going you know i'll eat some quick lunch and then i'm gonna go be working on that probably all the way until tomorrow when i give it um which means by sunday i am gonna collapse so if you try to get in touch with me on sunday good luck because <laughs> by then i will be shut down and done um, i'm definitely done um because it's been so amazing i am so humbled and grateful and um just honored and goosebumpy and all of those feelings um, about the amount of support that I have gotten um, for this website. You know, I, I sent out an email just kindly asking people if they wouldn't mind sharing. Um, I've asked you guys to sort of to share and I've kind of been putting it out there. Well, not only have people been sharing in abundance, which I am so incredibly grateful for, um, but on top of that, um, I've had donations of tickets. Like I've had people who wanted to purchase tickets for other people who can't afford it right now. Um, who don't, who can't who guarantee that they can afford it right now because uh, employment is so unknown and all of that stuff. Um, so I, I've been just, uh, kind of in this weird high about the whole thing because, um, it feels really amazing, like beyond amazing. I've been doing this for a long time. I would say I've been solidly doing it for six years, if not seven. Um, and to finally have my work respected and acknowledged enough by other professionals that they feel comfortable sharing it and encouraging other people to go attending themselves. Um, it is so nice to be um, valued as an equal and looked at as an equal and treated like an equal um, in terms of uh, my other professionals. Um, and you guys, your support has been amazing. Your shares have been amazing. Your um, just likes and all of those things have been great and of course the registrations have been wonderful so excited to have them and I'm just I realized that I'm going to be reaching people by doing it online that I would probably never see if I just stuck to the conference circuit and that gets me jazzed because I want so much of my stuff to be online and I want it to be available to you guys in an affordable way and um it's getting some attention and I'm I don't know, I'm excited and so I'm humbled and then I don't want to talk about it anymore because I don't want it to go bad or anything to happen. So we're done talking about that now. If you haven't registered for the webinar though, I will be putting the link in the description of this video as a link to everything I talk about goes in the description of the video. Um, so head over there and register. If you were just watching, 
live in neurodiversity news down the Facebook group. And you know that you guys are part of a very small contest of people and you've headed over here to watch this. Remember the three things that you need to do are subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment to this video that you want to come tomorrow, please. Um, and then I will be notifying those winners and the winners on the other platforms this afternoon, um, either by just sending you a link to register or by putting out some kind of post. I'm not sure yet or both probably um, just to make sure that you guys know. Um, and I'm excited. So if you don't win, please go register. If you do win, I am so excited to have you there. Thank you for playing because it's been really fun to be able to give stuff away for a change um, and not be kind of um, nothing else about it. There's no strings attached. I'm just giving stuff away and it feels good. Um, okay. Anywho, done with that jazz. Moving along. How about we get to the news? How about that? Okay, this week, interesting week. Um, we're all settling into this new normal thing and um, the news is kind of returning in a different way. Um, it's not back in exactly the same way, but um, we're all getting kind of, I guess, used to being all at home and some of us being out of work and I don't know, the whole mess. Um, and so I guess it feels a little bit more normal, slightly more routine. I don't know. I don't know, when I, know how I wanna kind of describe it. Um, but we've had some fun stuff come out this week. It's been interesting to see what um, what this whole quarantine and the global pandemic has sort of brought out in our community. That has been fascinating to me. Um, and so, yeah, let's take a, take a look at some of that stuff and, and all the rest of the news that we have. Um, I want to start out kind of, I'm going to start out as I usually do with COVID because I want to get it out of the way and I don't want to talk about it. But before... Um, I really get into that stuff. I want to talk about an advocate that we lost this week. Um, we lost a really important advocate in Mel Bags. Uh, if you are new to the autism community, if you are a newer advocate, a younger advocate, um, I highly recommend that you go look up Mel Bags and take a look at some of their stuff. Um, I don't know. It's hard when we lose. It's hard when we lose a really important person in our history, in our community, um, who has given so much and provided so much um, in terms of viewpoints, in terms of neurodiversity movement, in terms of so many other things. Um, so if you um, don't know Melbags, please, please go look them up because um, really important part of our history um, that we lost this week and we're all going to miss um, a lot. Um, I'm going to be sharing in honor, the first thing that I will be sharing is a piece by Mel um, called Nice Lady Therapists um, and it's all about uh, emotions and whether emotions are appropriate um, and what emotions are appropriate. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces so I'm going to share that one with you guys but I did want to start off that way because it's really important that we acknowledge our peers in a really special way. Um, yeah. So that's that. Um, moving on, um, really, really interesting letter from Carly Fogum this week. Um, she is uh, the Autism Society of America's uh, chair of the panel of autism advocates um, there. And she is an amazing mom, an amazing friend, an amazing advocate. Um, and she put together a really vulnerable, heartfelt letter on COVID. Um, that she has shared with the community and I think it's really important that all of us read it. Um, so please take the time and read Carly's piece because I think um, not only should we all read it but we should probably all share it. Um, and so take a look at that. I think it's important that we um, that we share it. Please take a look. Um, yeah. And moving along, uh, the last bit, oh, not the last bit, the almost last bit of COVID-ness, um, a little bit of happy news, I guess. It's, a, it's at least a positive twist on the COVID situation. Um, <clears throat> and that's coming out of CNBC.com. And there is an article uh, titled, Two Thirds of Our Team is Autistic, and That's Helping Us Survive. Um, not surprising to the autistics out there, always surprising to the rest of the world. Um, we're pretty good. We're, we're pretty good, we're pretty resilient about a lot of things, uh, and there are lots of really amazing things about hiring autistic workers, um, particularly in this kind of situation. Why? 
right? Why? Um, well, we're going to be in that article. They talk about um, AutoCon, which is a global IT consulting company, and they do hire uh, autistic workers. And so they are, I think, 200 to 300 of their 500 employees are autistic at this time. Um, and everybody sort of had to become resilient and kind of remember that everybody's working from home and everything's all different and get used to doing things in a new, different way. Um, and I know one of the concerns about having people work at home is usually that folks, you know, without Big Brother watching, will they really do their homework? Like that kind of feeling. Um, and as we know, autistics are not only loyal, but we're really, really good at our jobs. And when we're treated with respect, um, we do exactly what we say we're going to do. So if we tell you we're working, we're working uh, and that kind of stuff. And so this article highlights those really wonderful things about having autistic workers and why it's important for people to consider hiring us um, as we have an 85% unemployment rate. Um, so that is going on in there. Um, and uh, next, last piece on the pandemic um, actually comes from Spectrum Women magazine, comes from my fellow co-author of Spectrum Women, um, the book. Uh, and uh, it is from Lisa Morgan, and she writes about the unmet needs during the pandemic. Um, and uh, she really looks at it in terms of crisis supports and in terms of um, how unmet needs can really be a trigger for suicidal ideation and suicide itself, um, and why that's so important for us to think about in our community. Um, really, really great piece by Lisa. I would take a look at it if you have the time. If it's too triggery for you, I get it. Um, I totally get it, but it happens to be a really good piece. So if you can't read it yourself, maybe pass it along to somebody else. Um, so that's that. Um, those are my pandemic stories chosen for this week. Um, pandemic over. And we're going to move on to the real neurodiversity news, the just for neurodiversity news. Um, the good thing is that we do have that stuff coming out. In fact, on Psych Central this week, we had a piece from Neuroclastics Tara Vance. Um, and she writes about autism and HD, ADHD, and she actually did an interview with Dr. Joel Schwartz, who's a neurodivergent psychologist, um, talking about neurodivergent affirming therapy. So really kind of enveloping the neurodivergence into your therapy. Um, and I thought it was fantastic. I loved the interview. I loved the things that he said. Tara, thank you so much for introducing us to Dr. Schwartz. Um, and I think you guys should take a look at the interview and see what you think. Weigh in, weigh in on the conversation. Um, I think it's an interesting one. So um, take a look. All right then, moving right along. Um, nice one that came out this week, another really nice one came out of Geek Club Books this week. Um, they are doing lots to still continue to support Autism April, even though it's a little bit, you know, hampered this month or rather this year. So um, they did a great, great piece that got broken down into parts, but you can look at the whole piece together. Um, it's called Autistics in Real Life. Um, and what they did was follow four autistic advocates for the day and kind of find out what a day in their life is like. Um, those four advocates are people that you know, and many of them newsies. Um, and so we have Haley Moss, uh, we have uh, Krista Holman's Neurodivergent Rebel, uh, Pastor Lamar Hartwick, Hartwick and um, Chris Spinello from Autistic Not Weird. And those four folks um, have given their time and their privacy up a little bit to share what their day, what a day is like for an autistic advocate. So we'll take a look at that. It was a great piece. We've got some really good artwork from someone you may recognize um, in there. And so take a look at that piece. Um, I really like it. Okay. Um, now we're going to kind of move into the more entertaining portion, like the little things, the memes, the events, the, blo the um, books, those kind of things going on. Um, and so first up I have for you, I'm going to talk about it for what I feel like is the gazillionth time. But for the gazillionth time, Crip Camp is on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it, you guys. Um, I finally had the time to watch it. Um, I want to tell you I'm not easily emotional to anything, but I got angry while watching this um, with them. I got angry with them, and I cried with them um, in this. Um, there, It was very goosebumpy, really touching, um, and I think for the newer advocates and for folks um, kind of that are a little bit younger, it's interesting to, to remember that um, we are part of the disabled community, and... Um, this is part of our disability history. Um, so Crip Camp is about really the origins 
of the disability movement, uh, where it began highlighting people like Judy Human, um, who also has a book out called Being Human, one of my personal heroines. Um, and I really, I loved it. I loved it. It's real footage. Um, we're talking about real life. We're talking about fact and we're talking about our history. Um, and it's important, I think, for folks who are advocating now to remember where advocacy came from and what it looks like and what it can look like when it works well and when advocates work together. Um, so if you have Netflix, please head over and see Crip Camp. Um, if you don't, um, ask someone who you love if you can borrow their Netflix and, and sign in and watch it. It was really, really, really good. I'm going to be sharing a review with you in the... Um, description of it um, so you can have an idea of what it was about um, and really head over and take a look at it, it was really beautiful um, and it was funded by the Obamas just to add that there because it's another fact I picked up along the way <laughs> all right um, next up the autistic life uh, the autistic life is does a really really amazing job on Instagram of like not a meme but kind of a meme story it's multiple memes put together so if you don't follow the autistic life on Instagram head over now and follow um, I am going to be sharing with you guys one that came out this week that we all really appreciated um, and autistic autistic children grow up to become autistic adults Yes, yes they do. I was once an autistic child. Isn't that insane? Right? Um, it is to me because I never really felt like a kid, but that's beside the point. Um, you guys, so that's out. I'll be sharing that particular one with you, but please head over to the Autistic Life Instagram and follow really, really good stuff coming out. Congratulations, Autistic Life. And I hope you hear the joy in myself when I share it, and I hope you, you feel the love heading to you. So shout out to you, Autistic Life. Um, next up, tomorrow is not just my webinar. It's not. Tomorrow is also Autistic Adults Day. That's right, April 18th, uh, hashtag Autistic Adults Day. Um, and that is being kind of uh, spearheaded by Autism Grown Up. Um, if you don't know Autism Grown Up, please look them up on Facebook, on LinkedIn, somewhere. Tara Regan runs uh, Autism Grown Up, um, and she is an amazing, amazing person. And I've had the pleasure of spending some time with her this last week, actually uh, making a recording for her podcast. And what uh, we are going to be doing is celebrating Autistic Adult Day tomorrow. So besides watching my webinar, which isn't until 4 p.m., before you do that, before you settle in to watch my webinar, um, head over to Autism Grown Up on Instagram at 1 p.m. Eastern and then do the math from there, you guys. Um, they will be celebrating uh, Autistic Adults Day. Use the hashtag all day. Um, it's a really good um, a really good idea and I really love it. And if you want to know more about it and you want to know more about Tara, guess what? Michaela Ackerman, who is of uh, Edge of the Playground, just interviewed Tara yesterday about Autistic Adults Day. And I'm going to be sharing that video with you guys. Shout out to you, Michaela. Thank you so much for highlighting Autistic Adults Day as well. Um, so that's out there. And then last, as I mentioned, Autism Grown Up has a podcast um, out regularly. And this last episode that just came out has fellow newsy Haley Moss. Uh, being interviewed by Tara and I just did one the other day and that'll be coming out in May um, So head over and check out all the podcasts that they've done that you've missed um, So that's my big highlight on Autistic Adult Day. I hope you guys will participate um, Next up speaking of podcasts Autism Canada has a podcast. Yay! So shout out to Autism Canada. They're doing a podcast now and their first episode is out with the amazing Kelly Braun Johnson. She's a fantastic advocate, talks about employment a lot. Um, I am, um, have had the pleasure of interviewing her actually for Spectrumly Speaking back when I was doing that. Um, and I think she's an amazing person. So check out the Autism Canada pod podcast. First episode has Kelly Braun Johnson. So don't miss out on that. Um, and then, coming into the close here, um, Autism Societies of Minnesota and Greater Wisconsin have come together to put together a virtual conference. Um, that conference is called Stronger Together. It's a virtual autism conference. It's going to be, um, I think it's April 30th through May 1st. Um, so it's two days. The pre-conference is going to be a workshop on interventions, uh, interventions, 
nope, not what I meant to say, a workshop on interoception um, with Kelly Mahler. She's going to be doing her workshop as the pre-conference to that. Um, and then the breakouts and the, the speeches and everything. Um, we've got a lot of good people coming in um, and they've got some really good autistic speaking. So again, Haley Moss is going to be speaking for them. She's just all over the place, Haley. Um, and Judy Endow, the amazing, amazing, amazing Judy Endow is going to also be speaking. So if you're interested in that and you want to know more about it, I will be sharing the link with you there so you can register right there in the description do, 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 do. you know by the subscribe button the one that you should click okay anyway I'm done being silly so that's coming up that's the Autism Society of Minnesota and Greater Wisconsin next up another busy girl right Miss Barb Cook out of Australia she's got two yes two webinars coming up um, she has um, one for Asperger's Victoria online on April 30th she is going to be doing that 7.30 p.m. Australia time. It's the world of work, socializing and executive functioning um, with Barb Cook. So she's going to be talking about socializing and executive functioning in the workplace. If you can't catch that one, she's doing another workplace, socializing, uh, workplace social skills webinar off of her own website in May, uh, May 21st, and that's going to be Brisbane time, 6 p.m., um, so I will give you the links to those things if you'd like some help on workplace social skills. Um, next up, oh, shout out to uh, Actually Autistic Creations. Giant shout out, major shout out. I don't have a bigger, a big enough shout out for this. Um, Actually Autistic Creations has put, um, has designed and put up for sale uh, an autistic, an autism ally shirt that doesn't have a puzzle piece. Yes, allies, you too can give up the puzzle piece. You can now show your aut autism ally ness with the infinity symbol. Very much thank yous to Actually Autistic Creations for designing and putting up for purchase that shirt. If you know an autistic ally, an autism ally that you want to um, have them share their pride, this is the perfect shirt because it has no puzzle piece and you don't even have to explain why it shouldn't have one um, because those people are allies and they should know. Ding, ding, ding. Um, anyway, so that shirt is now available. We didn't have one and now we do. So please make sure the allies that you love get a hold of one. Um, they are for sale. I will give you that link. And on top of it being so cool for being the only one out there without a puzzle piece on it, um, additionally, all of the um, profits are going to be going to the Autism Autistic Women non and Non-Binary Network. Woo! I am going to have to rest up my mouth. I did like four interviews this week um, and I'm losing my voice and I have to do tomorrow. So I'm probably going to not talk for the rest of the day because obviously my mouth isn't working. In any case, uh, profits from the t-shirt go to Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network. Um, so two reasons to buy the shirt. Um, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, and then that's kind of it for outside news. As you know, I always save my stuff, my junk for the end. Um, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys right now that I am so, so proud um, to finally be a neuroplastic contributor officially. Um, I'll be doing not only some editing for them going forward, but also I just had a piece get out, come out and be published. Um, and it's all about the fables of autism labels. Um, and so that piece is out right now. I'm going to be sharing that link with you. Um, and I also had a piece come out last week with Autism Spectrum News. Um, their spring issue is all about women and girls on the spectrum. And I wrote a piece called Different is My Identifier. Um, and I would love for you guys to read both of those pieces. Um, so I will be sharing them in the description. I'm actually really, really proud of both of these pieces. Um, I came from a different place in my writer world. Um, and I'm really proud of them. So I hope you guys will take a look. Um, and then, of course, with the last few minutes here, I will remind you once again about my webinar tomorrow. It is tomorrow from 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. A recording will be sent out afterwards. So if you can't make that time but you still want to see it, please register because the recording will be sent out to all who register. If you miss it live, you'll just miss out on the Q&A. 
Um, and uh, please take the time to register. If you are trying to win today's last tickets by watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video, and comment to this video that you want to be there tomorrow, please. Um, and I will enter you in to win. The first um, five people to do so will win, um, and that will be the end of my ticket. So I'm excited to see all of you there. I will be sending out links to all of the winners from all of the platforms by the end of today so you guys can have it and be ready um, to see me tomorrow. I'm so excited to do it. I can't wait to talk about how it went next week. Um, I uh, hope to see a whole bunch of you there. Um, please take the time to register. The registration link will be in the description. Uh, it is tinyurl.com backslash self-defined. And I will be talking all about my new personal development development tool for autistics, for the autistic brain. Um, and I will be talking about my journey kind of getting there. How did I get to live a life that I don't need a vacation from? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what it looks like tomorrow and answer your questions about it. So um, please head over and register. I would love to reach as many of you as possible since April was kind of canceled. Um, yeah. So that's it for me here today. Um, happy weekend, you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Please don't forget, even if you're quarantined, to spend some time outside. Um, we need the fresh air. We're like plants. We need air and sunshine. Um, so please do that. It will help with your mental health. Um, and play with your pets and do all of those things. That's what I'm going to do this weekend. Um, after I do my webinar tomorrow, I'm just going to probably collapse and try to recharge so I can be back here on Tuesday for the live stream. Um, all right, that's all for me today in this episode of Neurodiversity Newsstand. I'm your host, Becca Laurie Hector. I hope you love this video. Please let me know with your likes that you liked it. Let me know with your thumbs down that you hated it. Um, talk to me in the comments. Uh, email me at info at beccalaurie.com. Come to my webinar tomorrow and miss me because you won't see me until Tuesday when I do the live stream of Becca's Backyard Live. I will see you guys next week. Have an amazing weekend. Bye.